Hey, hello, and welcome back once again. In this video segment, I'll start to work on the toolpath operations. To begin with, I'll duplicate lesson six, that's the geometry for this part, and perform a save as, and turn this into lesson seven. Next up, I'll use stock setup to define the rough stock and define the material type. Following this, I'll face the top of the part with a three inch diameter face mill. So let's get started. So on the screen is mill lesson six. So what I'm gonna do is move on up to the top left corner and do a save as. And I'm just gonna change the name from mill lesson six to mill lesson seven and click on the save button. So there we go, all looking good. Next up, let's go and start up, set up the stock setup. So on the left hand side, going to click the plus sign here and then move into stock setup. Now to kick off with I'm going to activate display and also put a check mark against fit screen. Now this material is four and a half by four and a half so I'm just going to input all the dimensions here and the material is 0.5 thick. Looking good. Now the material has also been pre-machined to 4.5 by 4.5 and is not part of the tool operations for this lesson. And then as you can see, Z0 is going to be the bottom of the part. So what I'm going to do is click on over here. So for our stock origin, we've got X0, Y0 and Z0. So all is looking good here. Next up, let's move over to tool settings. Now, first of all, program number, I'm going to change that to 7. The feed calculation, as you can see, it's set to from tool. And then sliding over to toolpath configuration, I'm going to activate assign tool number sequentially and also warn of duplicate tool numbers. Now, as we move on down below in the advanced option section, I'm going to check override defaults with modal values and check clearance, retract, and the feed plane. Now for the sequence number, I'm going to change that to one and move up in increments of one as well. Now down below, you can see the material is set to aluminum inch 2024. I'm going to change that. So I'm going to click on the select button. Now down the bottom of this dialog box, I'm going to open up the source drop now and pick mill library. And what I'm after is aluminum inch 6061. So I've picked it. I'm going to click on OK. Now all is looking good here. If we move over to files, you can see it's set up for a generic has for axis. And if it's not, we can just click on the replace button and pick a suitable machine. So all is looking good here. I'm going to click on cancel. And then down below, we're done. Let's click on the check mark. So the first thing I'm going to do is face the part to thickness. So I'm going to move up into toolpaths and slide on down and pick face toolpath. So you can use a facing toolpath to quickly clean the stock from the top of the part and create an even surface for future operations. You can base the toolpath on either chain geometry or on the current stock model. Now, when facing the stock, it's important to have the tool overlap the edges of the part by at least 50% of its diameter to prevent leaving scallops of material at the edges of the stock. Now, to satisfy this prompt on the screen, I'm just going to accept this new NC name, Mill Lesson 7, and click on OK. Now, I'm just going to move this prompt over here. The chaining dialog box shows up chain is set and we're prompted on the screen to select OK to use define stock or select chain one. Well I'm just going to use the define stock so I'm just going to click on the OK button. Now here we are on the toolpath type page with facing set. So the first order of business is we're going to move down to tool and we're going to pick up a three inch face mill. So I'm going to click on select library tool and then I'm just going to roll down 
and find myself a three three inch face mill and there it is three inch face mill looks good gonna click on the OK button now a few things to set up here some feeds and speeds so as you can see this is tool number one length offset number one our three eight our three inch face mill now the feed rate I'm gonna change that to 20 inches a minute and for the spindle speed 1500 now for the plunge rate I'm gonna make that 20 and as you can see we've got rapid retract on so look all is looking good on the tool page next up let's move over to cut parameters now first up at the very top I'm going to open up the style and the style that we're after is zigzag now down below before we forget stop to leave on floors I'm going to change that 50 thou to zero now sliding over to the right move between cuts I'm going to change that to linear so all's looking good on the cut parameter page let's go check out linking parameters so kick off at the very start I'm going to activate clearance and I'm also going to activate use clearance only at the start and end two inches will do nice as we move on down the retract what I'm going to do is change that to absolute now for the retract it's set at 0.25 I'm going to change that to 0.6 remember Z0 is the bottom of the part now for the feed plane gonna make that absolute and that 0.2 is not big enough gonna change that to 0.6 now the top of stock is 0.5 so that's right on the money and then down below the depth gonna change that to absolute and the depth that we want to face to 0.45 so we're all looking good here everything is absolute top of stock 0.5 and our depth is 0.45 and as you can see the feed plane and the retract are above the top of the stock so we are looking good next up just going to click the OK button we're all done here and there's our toolpath looks good now that completes this video thanks so much for watching